What's going on YouTube? Don't forget to like this video, comment on it, share it, subscribe, smash the bell notification, hit the Cash App link in the description box, continue and support this podcast, continue and support free speech because hey, like I always say, we don't know how much time we got left. Hey bro, what is profiling? Profiling is the practice of categorizing people and predicting their behavior on the basis of particular characteristics. Some people automatically think negatively as soon as they even hear the word profiling, but in fact, not only does everyone do it, Every human being in the world is also profiled all the time. Take businesses and insurance companies, for example. Companies that agree to give us car insurance want to know what we do for a job, where we live, our age, our sex, our marital status, etc. The information is a proxy, a clue to our lifestyle and our behavior. It helps them assess the likelihood that we will be involved in accidents. A proxy is a stand-in for a trait, such as race or sex or religion, used as a shortcut to judge something else. For example, insurers would like to ask about the sex of a driver because women are statistically safer drivers than men. Women might profile certain kinds of men to date if they're looking to get married or settle down or have kids, for example. An NFL or NBA scout may profile certain types of athletes based on an internal bias that said athlete may develop a certain way or have assumed athletic potential. We profile the cleanliness of the restaurants we frequent. We profile the doctors that we decide to let perform surgery on us. We profile the person walking up to our car window asking us to roll it down. More than likely, you may roll it down if the person looks like they're safe, they have money or educated and aren't threatening, etc. The list is endless. Now, imagine for a minute, if you will, that you travel to an alien planet. As soon as you arrive, the first thing they tell you is that the aliens who live there that wear red shirts only make up 6% of the population, but they commit over 50% of the violent crime. Would you be more aware or more on edge when you see an alien walking around with a red shirt on? Of course you would. And you wouldn't be wrong for it. Not only would you not be wrong for it, you would actually be proving you have good reasoning capabilities. But even though that's true, that doesn't mean that every alien in a red shirt is bad or that people who wear blue and green shirts don't commit violent crimes as well. How about this one? Imagine you were programming a new high-tech police robot. This robot would be designed to protect the neighborhood where you and your family and all your loved ones live. Would you put in every single crime statistic known to mankind into the programming of this robot to make him as efficient as possible? Of course you would. If you didn't, you would be doing you and your family a terrible disservice. Any rational and logical person would want their robot to be on higher alert and to be looking out for people that fit the description of criminals. And you wouldn't give a fuck about hurting anyone's feelings. If the robot pulled over and questioned someone who wasn't actually a criminal, well, fine, no problem. That person would just be let go. But we are going to make damn sure that no criminals hurt our families. Because at the end of the day, that is the highest priority. You see, profiling is not only a necessary part of any safe society and is the most effective way to extinguish the greatest amount of crime, but it is also an essential part of any healthy person's rationale who is aware of their surroundings and cares about self-interest as well as the interest of their loved ones. Take what Mark Cuban said during an interview with Inc. Magazine. If, if I see a black kid in a hoodie, and it's late at night, I'm walking to the other side of the street. And if on that side of the street, there's a guy that has tattoos all over his face, white guy, bald head, tattoos everywhere, I'm walking back to the other side of the street. And the list goes on of, of stereotypes that we all live up to and, and are fearful of. Now, Mark Cuban is known for saying a lot of dumb shit, but I would like to actually commend Mark Cuban here for at least keeping it a buck. Mark Cuban actually, in this instant, instance, kept it real, and I appreciate Mark Cuban for his honesty. A big problem in our society nowadays is that people are afraid to be honest. People are afraid to offend people, and people are afraid to keep it real, and so now we've been boxed into this crazy-ass corner where logic and rationale no longer fucking exist. Now, one of the things about profiling that becomes tricky and oftentimes rubs people the wrong way is that it can seem both rational and unfair at the same time. But at what expense do we throw away common sense and the upholding of a safe society simply because we don't want to risk being unfair or hurting someone's feelings? The bald white guy with the face tattoos may have in fact been a born again preacher and Mark Cuban just hurt his feelings. But in the case that Mark Cuban was right and the guy was really dangerous, Mark Cuban made a wise decision and potentially saved his own ass. So what's the best move? Risk your own life or potentially risk hurting someone else's feelings? I think we all know the clear answer.
When there are statistical differences, clear-cut statistical differences between groups, it is logical to act upon them. Let me ask you, is it really worth the police stopping 85 to 90-year-old women if they're out hunting for criminals who have been robbing local 7-Elevens? Of course not. Tarun Caton, an associate professor in law at Oxford and Melbourne University, said, The appeal of profiling is that it saves time and resources. Take an airline that wants to make sure its pilots have 20-20 vision. He says, there is statistical evidence that eyesight of elderly people deteriorates. So instead of the airline having to figure out whether their pilots retain good eyesight by testing everyone over 65, it may be cheaper to have a mandatory retirement age. Here, age is a proxy for good vision. Despite running the risk of hurting some people's feelings or getting it wrong sometimes, the fact is profiling works. Criminologists such as Brianna Fox at the University of South Florida have used statistical techniques to investigate property and violent crimes. An ex-FBI special agent, Fox subdivided burglaries into various categories and analyzed the characteristics of those convicted of committing these crimes. For example, where burglaries were clearly sophisticated and premeditated, the criminals tend to be older, male, white, and with a long criminal history but few arrests. Police departments that experimented by using her techniques and her profiles solved over 300% more burglaries compared to the departments that did not. With that kind of success, profiling is not going to disappear. Indeed, in the digital age, as more and more data becomes available for analysis, profiling in its myriad forms is likely to become even more prevalent. Now, I gotta remind you, it's always important that we interrogate the numbers, especially when using certain proxies. First of all, how big is the difference in stats? For example, if there's 50.1% of women that are linked to behavior X and 49.9% of men are linked to behavior X, using sex as a proxy is going to be pretty useless. Secondly, how many false negatives and false positives will there be? That is to say, how many threats will you miss if you target only one group and how many innocent people will come under suspicion? Like it or not, race is a necessary component in the overall profile in any criminal investigation. If a pink elephant took peanuts from the peanut jar, I should look for a pink elephant. In my search, I just may confront a few innocent pink elephants before I find the culprit, but that's unfortunately just part of the process. By screaming racism at every turn, we are only assisting the criminals and hindering law enforcement and making our society less and less safe. Like everyone else, I love and appreciate the civil liberties that we have in this country, and I abhor police injustices to any group of people. However, I don't want to tie the hands of those who make it possible for me to enjoy those liberties. The fact remains, it's a cop's job to protect law-abiding citizens. A car weaving across the lanes is a profile for a drunk driver. A parade of shady people coming in and out of trap houses at all hours of the night and day is a profile for drug activity. Two black teenagers cruising in a car at 2.30 a.m. in a mostly white residential neighborhood or white teens cruising in an all-black neighborhood is cause for suspicion. If the cops didn't check them out, they're not doing their job. Check this out, man. Imagine you were a police superintendent in charge of security at a political rally where the president is about to speak. You have information that someone may attempt to assassinate him. You know nothing about the potential killer, and as usual, you're stretched for resources. resources. Should the few officers that you have at your disposal give equal attention to all the members of the crowd? Or would it make more sense for them to concentrate more on men than on women? Might it be reasonable to conclude or assume that those who appear to be over 75 years of age would pose less of a threat as well? You get my point, right? Being smart is not a bad thing. Being smart should not be frowned upon. I heard about this horrific and tragic story one time. It was about a woman and her daughter who were the victims of a multiple rape in their home by three men. The mom was also brutally murdered. Prior to the assault, the killers had been cruising around in the neighborhood. Had the police spotted them and pulled them over and recognized that those men were not supposed to be in that neighborhood, the mother might have lived to become a happy grandmother someday but they didn't make it. They didn't make it, man. I don't know about you, but I would rather subscribe to the old adage, better safe than sorry. Profiling is a necessary evil, my friend. It's a necessary evil, okay? And anyone crying about it is either a criminal, a hypocrite, because everyone does it, or they just don't understand how a safe society works, or potentially all three, or also maybe you just got bad logic. Maybe you also just got bad reasoning capabilities. I see you soon, man. Don't forget to like this video, comment on it, share it, subscribe it, smash the bell notification. Don't treat me like a side chick. Send your boy a little bit of that guapanero by hitting that cash app link down in the description box and continue to support this podcast and free speech podcast just like this. I love you, man. Until next time, stay safe, baby. I'm out of here, bro. Peace.